In addition, there are a number of key civilian and military leaders we would like to recognize. Associate Justice, Alabama Supreme Court, Justice William Sellers and his spouse Lee, the Honorable Bill Gillespie Jr., Mayor of Prattville, Lieutenant General Charles Cleveland, U.S. Air Force retired, former Air University Commander and President, Lieutenant General Alan Peck, U.S. Air Force retired, former Air University Commander and President, Major General and Mrs. Brad Sullivan, Commander, LeMay Center, and Vice Commander, Air University, Mr. and Mrs. Richard Aldridge, Program Executive Officer for Business and Enterprise Systems and Director of the Business and Enterprise Systems Directorate, Major General Bowen Ballard, U.S. Air Force retired, Air University Foundation trustee, Major General Walter Gavan, U.S. Air Force retired, Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic and Economic Development at Troy University, Dr. Jack Hawkins, Chancellor, Troy University, Ms. Anna Buckaloo, President and Chief Executive Officer, Montgomery Area Chamber of Commerce, and Chief Master Sergeant Julia Gudgel, Command Chief Master Sergeant, Air Education and Training Command. Lastly, we would like to welcome all commanders, commandants, senior leaders, directors, command chiefs, chiefs, first sergeants, supervisors, and the members of the Maxwell Gunner team. The change of command ceremony is a military tradition rooted in history and dates back to the time of Frederick the Great of Prussia. During that time, military organizations developed flags, which were unique to their organization with specialized colors and designs. The soldiers followed their leaders into battle with flag in hand. If the banner flew proudly after the conflict, it was a sign of victory on the field of battle. With its obvious importance, the flag was soon incorporated into the ancient change of command ceremonies. The organization's banner was exchanged in public for all to see. The person holding the flag was the unchallenged and sovereign leader of the unit. The modern day ceremony is principally symbolic, yet it still announces to all the authority of the incoming commander in the finest military tradition. The transfer of the command flag to the incoming commander symbolizes the assumption of command. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of ruffles and flourishes, the singing of our national anthem by Senior Airman Candy Taylor and the invocation from Chaplain Colonel Mike Newton. The Commander, Air Education and Training Command, Lieutenant General Marshall B. Webb and Lieutenant General James B. Hecker.
Would you pause with me for a moment of prayer? <coughs> then I heard the voice of the Lord asking, Who should I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. Isaiah chapter 6. Almighty God, your call to the prophet thousands of years ago, while divine and unique, resonates in the hearts of every airman, past and present. It reminds us of our nation's call to service, to be always ready to go, to fly, fight, and win in air, space, and cyberspace, to be a warrior in the profession of arms, standing shoulder to shoulder with soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and our international partners. Now we know, Lord, the transformation into the profession of arms for so many of our nation's sons and daughters starts and continues here at our Air Forces University, Air University. Help us, O oh God, as we build and scaffold every officer enlisted or civilian on the foundations of developing themselves, developing others around them, developing their organizations and their units, and developing bold and innovative ideas that lead to air-mindedness and mission success. And so, it is for this profound responsibility, O oh God, we pause at this assumption of command to take personal stock and to ask for your blessing on our new commander, Lieutenant General James Hecker. We thank you for the character and wisdom of this seasoned officer who is uniquely prepared to lead us. We express our gratitude for those who have poured into his life Loving parents who are here today, what a blessing. Family, friends, coaches, teachers, mentors, and especially the love and support of his dear wife, Terry, whose true Air Force blue grit and constitution is a constant strength. And now, God, as General Hecker grasps the guide on from our AETC Commander, General Webb, May we all embrace our part in developing agile, multi-domain airmen under his leadership so that we will have the vision to see the next Mitchell, Arnold, LeMay, or Rand in our classrooms, or the next John Chapman, Lance Sijon, or Liz Jacobson across these proving grounds, knowing they too answered the call, here am I, send me. Now protect those who serve in deployed locations tonight, O oh God, and watch over their precious families. In your most holy name, amen and amen. Thank you, Senior Airman Taylor and Chaplain Newton. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It is my pleasure to present the commander, Air Education and Training Command, Lieutenant General Marshall B. Webb. Good afternoon. Anna Lisa can throw a party, let me tell you. Wow, standing room only, I see you guys up there. <laughs> Hey, welcome to part two of Air University Change of Command. This chapter called the Assumption of Command. So for many of you, maybe it's your, it's your first uh, part of this, but uh, for those that uh, have participated in both, uh, thank you. Um, it's great to see everyone again. Um, we're getting ready to recognize the 32nd commander of Air University. So to those community leaders, the members of the Alabama River region, Obviously, the Hecker family, the extended Hecker family, families and friends, and of course, the Airmen of Air University, thank you for being here this afternoon. You know, in, early, in the early 1930s, the Army Air Corps Tactical School was moved here to Montgomery. Maxwell Field saw several iterations of command as the Air Corps sorted herself out you know, for World War II, and of course, finally gave birth to Air University. So Air University was established in 1946, 
Y'all just uh, recently celebrated your 73rd anniversary. And so the, the standard was set at Maxwell Field and now Maxwell Air Force Base as the country's intellectual center for air power thinking and education. So today, the Air, air University mission develop leaders, enrich minds, advance air power, space, and cyber, build relationships, and inspire service. So, you know, recently we just talked about some of the uh, Air University uh, accomplishments. Uh, a couple of them, I think, uh, are worthy of noting here uh, because they directly tie into what we're seeing in, uh, here for the future. Recently, the, of course, the Air Force has had a renewed focus on quality. Air University partnered with Air Force's Personnel Center to establish the Officer, Instructor, and Recruiter Special Duty Board. This process ensures top candidates are considered for faculty and instructor opportunities across the Air Force. Also, Air University just partnered with Arizona State University, a nationally, re nationally renowned for their premier distance learning experience. This step promises to single-handedly revolutionize online military experience, professional military experience for over 13,000 airmen annually. So, if ever there was a time at Air University for thought leaders, it's now. Our national defense strategy paints a picture that is crystal clear of what we, the Department of Defense, will need to do and need to be in order to be ready for today's challenges. Called the return of great power competition, DOD will not be able to rest on our laurels of the CT fight. Joint war fighting, from multi-domains is a must. Luckily, Air Force has already stepped out in this direction, focusing specifically on command and control and doctrine. Of course, ground zero for doctrine development resides right here at Maxwell. And as you've all seen in the discussions in the, uh, on TV, or of course in the newspapers, or the various social media feeds, the actions of the last year, the importance of space war fighting has never been more critical for our national security. I'm counting on Air University to ensure we lead out of the gate uh, as the Space Force stands up to pave the way for education of Space Force professionals, Air Force Airmen that must be fluent in all aspects of space, and the Space Cadre who will teach all of us. In the realm of the Force Generator, those that teach the rest of us, the Chief of Staff expects us, Score Checker and I, to hold him accountable for valuing faculty. We need the very best to ensure the best intellectual rigor is applied to these vexing challenges. We have outstanding enlisted officer and civilian faculty. We need more. So just a few minutes ago, uh, we made Lieutenant General Hecker the newest three-star in the United States Air Force. He makes the 44th three-star here on active duty, and th that number represents 0 0.013, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I did the math in the calculator last night, uh, percent of the Air Force. It's a pretty big deal. And I tell you, everyone gathered here is absolutely blessed that we have Jim Hecker here assuming command. He's a six-time commander. He was most recently the Vice Director of Operations on the Joint Staff at the Pentagon. I guarantee you he's got a smile on his face because he is no longer working in the Pentagon. He's down here in <laughs> Montgomery, Alabama. See that? <laughs> For all the challenges and charges I briefly laid out, Scorch brings a perfect blend of legislative experience and operational chops to the helm. Combat leadership at the general officer level in Afghanistan, expeditionary leadership read the Tomodachi earthquake in Japan, education and training experience in AETC already as 19th Air Force commander, and additionally, he has academic bona fides, Georgetown University, Naval War College experience, Army War College experience, Air War College, of course. Jim and Terry, welcome back to AETC. Congratulations on taking command of such a prestigious institution. And finally, I'd really be remiss if I didn't thank uh, General, Major General Brad Sullivan 
and his wife, Sam, for carrying the torch for the Air University for the last few weeks. Uh, it's deeply appreciated. You did a very well, uh, well done job, Sully. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for attending today. Scorch, what do you say? Let me get her done. Thanks, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as we invite General Hecker to join General Webb at center stage, where General Webb will officiate the assumption of command for Air University, in which the command will formally pass from General Webb to General Hecker. Department of the Air Force Headquarters, Air University, Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama. Special Order Number G-19-006, under the provisions of Air Force Instruction 51-604, and effective 22 November 2019, Lieutenant General James B. Hecker assumes command of Air University, Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama. Gentlemen, please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce the Commander and President of Air University, Lieutenant General James B. Hecker. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, appreciate everyone showing up uh, kind of late on a Friday. Um, but you know, these things just don't happen. And as General Webb said, uh, it took a lot of effort from a lot of people, but the two I'd like to highlight is Annalisa and Roland that pretty much uh, got this thing going. So thank you very much. And, uh, <laughs> Senior Airman Taylor. Wow, you got some pipes. <laughs> that was good work. You know, the voice is still on. You might be able to jump in there. <laughs> now that, that was very special. Thank you very much. That was good. And Chaplain Newton, thanks a lot uh, for the invocation there. Uh, that was great. Um, I know we have a lot of civilians uh, that are here. Uh, I see Justice Sellers. We have some mayors. We have former AU commanders. Please don't grade my homework. Uh, <laughs> but I may be giving you a call for some advice sometimes. And I'd like to ditto Sully and uh, Sam. Hey, great work. I know it was, a, it was hard not having, you know, cotton around, you're kind of on your own. I'm sure you changed a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and you're going to say, oh, that's exactly how cotton did it. <laughs> Got it. Uh, but anyways, no, I, I know it was, a, it was a burden doing all three things, vice, acting commander, and the LeMay Center. Uh, and you did, a, did an awesome job, thanks. Um, General Webb, you know, thanks a lot for those words. And you are right. Uh, I am happy to leave the Pentagon. The next time I go there, it will have a visitor's badge on, and that will be the best thing in the world. So, uh, thanks for the opportunity to command. Terry and I are very excited and uh, can't wait to work for you and appreciate the opportunity. It was about two years ago that we saw each other last. We were in Bagram, Afghanistan, sitting in a tent, eating dinner. Uh, talking some personal issues and some more issues, uh, and it was great. And it's great to uh, be back together and look forward to working with you. Uh, but most importantly, it's great to be back in Alabama. You know, my wife and I and family were here in 2006 to 2007. We lived in eastern Montgomery. Uh, I was attending Air War College, uh, and we just had a fantastic year here. If you fast forward about three assignments, uh, now I have a kid that just finished up his junior year. I have another one just finished up his freshman year of high school, and it's time to look for colleges. Uh, so we're in Las Vegas at the time, so we looked around Las Vegas. Uh, so we looked at uh, Arizona State, Arizona, University of Arizona, San Diego, place up in Idaho. We did all that, and he had pretty much decided, my oldest, that he was gonna go to Arizona State University. 
So I thought we had it locked in. And then about two days later, he goes, Dad, you mind if we uh, go look at some schools in Alabama? And I go, yeah, that'd be great, let's go. So we came over and we looked at some schools here and we're on the flight home and I go, so what do you think? And he goes, you know, Dad, I think I wanna to go to a school in Alabama. And I go, why is that? He goes, you know, the other schools, I kind of felt like I was a number. Where here, I felt like I was part of the family. People truly cared for me. And I go, you know what that's called, huh? That's called Southern hospitality. <laughs> uh, so both of my kids ended up uh, going to school here in Alabama. And I know what you're thinking. <laughs> what school did they go to? Was it two and a half hours northwest of here? Or was it about 30 miles east of here? Well, if I told you, half of you wouldn't listen to the rest of what I had to say. <laughs> so I think I might hold off on that and keep you in suspense. Uh, but Alabama, uh, family's really important to them and family's really important to me as well. So I'd like to uh, highlight a couple people here. My wife, Terry, I've uh, been married 29 years now. It'll be 30 in November, so we're about a year away from that. Uh, she's just been by my side every step of the way. No chance I'd be up here without her. Uh, been through several moves. Uh, been a single mom uh, as I've been deployed on several occasions and just done fantastic. I love you and thank you for everything that you've done. And then I got my mom and my dad. My dad unfortunately passed several years back, um, but they instilled in me the Air Force core values before the Air Force had core values. It really is. Integrity, service before self, and excellence in all you do weren't part of the lingo you know, when I was born a long time ago. Uh, but they, that's truly, when I look back at when I grew up, that's what they did. Um, so thanks for not being a so-so mom. Thanks for doing the extra effort, getting up early, staying up late, going to all the ball games, doing all the studying with us, reading the Bible verses, all that thing, Mom. Thanks, I wouldn't be here without you. Appreciate it. And now my stepdad, Gary, they've been together for a while. I'll tell you, if there's one thing I don't worry about, I don't worry about if my mom's being taken care of. Because uh, Gary, you truly love her, you take care of her, and I don't have to worry about that at all. Thank you very much for all you do. And then I got my brother Rod. My brother Rod, I guess we look alike, somebody said. Um, but uh, he's 14 months older than I am. Uh, we were one grade apart in high school. When he was a senior, I was a junior. He was a fullback, I was a tailback. If I could count on somebody to get his block, it would be my brother. And when it, when it was a third and goal from the one yard line, if we handed it off to him, he was always in the end zone. Uh, but we were best friends. You know, a lot of times brothers fight, but we were pretty much best friends throughout. And then now as we've gotten older, uh, he's more of a mentor to me. If there's something that's going on in life or whatever it is, and I'm not quite sure what to do, I know who to turn to, and I always give my brother a call, and he always gives me some great advice, so thank you for that. And then my Uncle Kurt was able to make it out. I call him Uncle Kurt, uh, but he was 17 years younger than my dad. You know what that was? Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, uh, I've always kind of looked at Kurt as an older brother. Uh, I think he's maybe six, seven years older uh, than I am. Uh, but, but he's kind of held the family together. You know, Grandpa passed here just a little bit ago, so he's the, he's the oldest uh, hecker we have now. Uh, and he's holding the family together. He always does the family reunions up at his place on a lake in Idaho, and we just have a great time. So Kurt really means a lot to, to be out here, and thanks for everything you do for us. The last one I, I'd like to mention is Aaron. Uh, Aaron was my secretary at Kadena Air Force Base for a couple years. Uh, she was able to come out to 19th Air Force where she was my secretary there for a couple more years and just an outstanding uh, work relationship, but more importantly, an outstanding personal relationship uh, that's gone you know, well beyond when we were working together. And really appreciate that you were able to make it out, so thanks. Okay, so uh, Air University. 
You know, when you first learn that you're going to get a job, typically what you do is you jump on line and you kind of take a look and go, oh, what's all this place about? And I go, I know this place. I went to Air World College here. It was truly amazing when I kind of looked at it, at how much responsibility and how much Air University touches airmen. You know, we have touch points during an airman's career probably four or five times. Some of those are year long. Some of those are one week course. Um, uh, but we touch quite a few airmen, all, all the way from accessions, you know, whether it's uh, officer training school and ROTC, where 85% of our officers come from. Only 15% come from the Air Force Academy. We gotta make sure, and we have the responsibility to make sure they're ready for our Air Force. And once we get them in our Air Force, we gotta make sure that we continue to develop them. And we do that through different programs. On the enlisted side, we do it four different times. When they're young airmen, when they're an NCO, senior NCO, and then again as a chief. And then we do the same thing on the officer side of the house. It's a tremendous responsibility. Other things we do is we, we train the chaplain corps here. Uh, we have a tenant unit that uh, has the JAG school that does stuff uh, here as well. Uh, we have the National Security Space Institute at Peterson. Now that's probably going to change into something. You know, we now have Space Command. We might have a Space Force. We will see what happens. But the way that we train and develop and educate our space partners and our, our, our space uh, warfighters is going to change over the next year during our time here, and we'll see where that goes. Other things we do is we develop doctrine at the LeMay Center, and we do a lot of war gamings. We find tactics, techniques, and procedures that work, and we put them into um, practice, into doctrine. Uh, the war games that we run will determine how the Air Force spends their money in the future. So we gotta get that right because people are catching us. And right now, it's so important because if you look at China, if you look at Russia, they are catching up to us, if not have caught up to us, uh, when it comes to military equipment. They haven't caught us on human capital. And that's what we do here. We develop and we nurture human capital. And that's what we need to do to make sure we have the competitive, uh, the competitive edge on our adversaries. Uh, so it's important we'll make sure that we do that, but the good news is um, General Cotton's done a lot of this. Uh, he's done a great job. I was able to talk to him on the phone several times. And a lot of the things he puts in place make sure that we continue to be able to develop that human capital. Some of the things uh, that General Webb talked about is uh, getting you know, high quality instructors. It's a now a boarded position to do that, uh, which is fabulous. Um, so we got nothing but a bright future here and we really look forward to it. The bottom line is I'd like Air University to be the premier educational uh, and leadership development institution. Better than any other college that we have out there. We need that. And we'll help them and we'll take best practices from, from them as well. But we can't do it without everybody being part of one team. And that one team includes the second row right here. Uh, I really look forward to working uh, with the community uh, and working together to make Air University and your community uh, better than it is today. So with that said, I'll get the suspense over with. Roll Tide. <laughs> Thank you, General Hecker. The men and women of Air University welcome General Hecker and his family. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the first verse of the Air Force song and remain standing for the departure of the official party and distinguished guests. Oh! 
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending and have a great Air Force Day. Oh.